We're talking with a Southern accent. John Rawl back here on the show that's all about the South as we begin our number two. And we're continuing on with our spring swing tour of the Southeast. We're on our third tour stop as we've already been to Crystal River, Florida. Then we wound our way to the plains of Auburn and Opelika, Alabama. And now we've ventured into the northern end of the state of Alabama, and it's the Alabama Mountain Lakes. That is our spotlight here as we have our virtual spring tour of the Southeast here at y'all and y'all.com. We've got a repeat performance coming up later in the hour from Malia Hames, and she's with the Alabama Mountain Lakes Tourist Association. She's going to be on to give us some great pointers, what we can do virtually, kind of getting our prep, our preparation lined up to go to North Alabama, the 16 counties of North Alabama. And we'll have her on a repeat performance from her as she was on in hour number one. Also, in the next segment of today's Y'all Show, oh, I can't wait for this. We're going to be talking barbecue. And Chris Lilly from Decatur's Big Bob Gibson Barbecue, he is the pit master there, home of the famous white sauce. And Chris is going to be on in the very next segment. You don't want to miss out on on the fun as we talk about North Alabama right here on the Y'all Show. And we love the uniqueness of North Alabama and the beauty. But going back to that unique thing, you're not going to find anything like this anywhere when we're talking about baggage. We're talking about unclaimed baggage, and we're specifically talking about the Unclaimed Baggage Center located in Jackson County and Scottsboro. And Brenda Cantrell is on with us right now to talk about Unclaimed Baggage Center's 50th anniversary here this year and the unique place that it is in Scottsboro, Alabama. Hello, Brenda. Welcome into the Y'all Show. Well, thank you so much for having me. Good to have you. And first things first, my goodness, Brenda, we love when our guests come on the show, but when they come prepared, as it looks like you have, and repping the y'all, we love that. So just go ahead, and for those who can't see you, let's tell people what you got on there. I have on a T-shirt that said, I don't have an accent, y'all do. (laughs) And where can we get said T-shirt? We actually sell these at our store. Um, our Saturday wear our our staff wears them on Saturdays um, to work in the store because that's the day when most people from out of town and from out of state uh, come in to shop with us. And so we just thought it was a great play on, of course, what we think is the best accent in America, um, and it just plays off on all the other cultures that that come in and shop with us. And it's a pretty good selling T-shirt. Well, Brenda, I like you for wearing that shirt, but. Your your first name is my mama's name, so I'm, I'm kind of partial oh. to you. So as we just had Mother's Day the other day, but uh, what a great shirt! I don't have an accent, y'all do. That that's really really good. Well, at Unclaimed Baggage, they don't have all throughout the store original items like like things right there that you're seeing with Brenda wearing. You you usually have stuff that's actually second hand. That's what you're famous for. You're celebrating your 50th anniversary. So to help us understand what exactly we'll find when we stop by Scottsboro, Alabama and visit you, what in the world is unclaimed baggage and how does it get to you there in Northeast Alabama? I know so many people go, why aren't you in a major city if you're this major destination? Um, but unclaimed baggage is the only store in America that buys and resells unclaimed baggage from the airline industry. And this is after the airlines have spent 90 days trying to reunite bags with their owners And over 99.9% of the time, they're successful in doing that. But then that leaves that, you know, fraction of a percent of items that um, remain unclaimed. And the passenger who uh, was unable to get their bag reunited with them, received some type of settlement from the airline. And then these orphaned bags uh, sitting in warehouses, we purchased them through our long-term exclusive contracts and bring them in from all over the country here to Northeast Alabama. And you do a good job doing that. I still can't believe you're the only place in America that does what you do, getting unclaimed baggage and then selling it. Well, this pure nature of our of our product, there's only so much. Um, you know, you just think of the sheer volume of people that travel. But when you look at the small fraction of the percentage of items that ultimately end up lost or unclaimed, it's only enough for one store to be in business. And, I mean, and that's really a testament to how well the airlines do. Um, there's no perfect business model out there but i think if you're within half a percent 
um, of perfection, I think you're doing pretty well um, in the scheme of things. Of course, you know, they, they get a bad rap from time to time just because they're on such a large scale. Um, but really, I mean, we're it. And uh, we're proud to call Scottsboro home. It's where the business started in 1970 uh, by our current owner's dad. And it just adds to the mystique and the wonder uh, of, of who we are, that you have to take this little back roads um, off the beaten path road trip uh, to come find us. And it's obviously well worth the trip because we have nearly a million visitors a year that come from all over the country and all over the world to come see us. Yeah, you have people from all over the world. I saw the video recently done about unclaimed baggage. You had people who were from Michigan going to San Antonio, but they decided to go through Scottsboro, Alabama. And I'm sorry, Brenda, I don't know much about geography, but I know that is not a straight line to go to Scottsboro when you're trying to go to San Antonio. Didn't Bugs Bunny used to, he took a wrong turn, turn in Albuquerque and <laughs> something like that. <laughs> yeah. And so people go really all over. I've been there. It is an experience. And we're looking at some video now. You've got, what? what is the, uh, how, I don't want to embarrass you here, but how much square footage or miles of unclaimed baggage center is there? Well, the, the retail space covers over 50,000 square feet um, in two different buildings. And, you know, we, we've expanded about as far as we can in our, in our physical footprint here in Scottsboro. Um, we're kind of landlocked where we are. Uh, but interestingly enough, prior to even having to close down due to the coronavirus, um, we've been working on an online store for the last year um, as part of our 50th anniversary initiatives. And we are literally days away. I mean, we, we, we've had to work through some bugs the last few weeks. Um, but we're getting ready to release our online shopping nationwide um, just in a matter of days. Now, of course, it's not going to be everything, you know, that's in the store. Um, it's a separate inventory, but it comes, it, the nature of the product is the same, and we try to offer a great variety so that wherever you call home, you can still experience unclaimed baggage shopping. And if you saw from the video there, there is so much variety that you'll find there in the store. I was watching something, and... I'm sure there's probably even a better story than what I'm about to relay, but one of the things that showed up at Unclaimed Baggage was a $60,000 watch that somebody left in a luggage and it somehow ended up in Scottsboro, Alabama. Can you do better than that, Brenda? What else have you got there? <laughs> you know, I mean, we've had things I'm sure that are valued more than that, but obviously we're not going to sell them in our retail store. Um, a number of years ago, we had a bracelet that was valued at $100,000. Um, it was all diamonds and, you know, whether it was like a professional athlete or maybe even a celebrity, um, but we had the bracelet uh, disassembled and, and put into earrings and pendants and things of that nature. Um, but the Rolex watch uh, is really something phenomenal. And people, when people see the jewelry that we have in our showcase and they say, who loses that? Um, well, the person that can afford it is probably the person that had insurance on it and can afford to replace it well that actually leads to my question to you brenda and how in the world does somebody let this stuff go i mean is it because they get reimbursed insurance wise do they just not care do they die what happens you know we always say if these bags could talk a story they could tell um you know we've been doing this obviously a long time and a lot of what we see come through is a lot of just normal items in there, maybe, maybe it's vacation travel, maybe it's business travel. Um, and so, you know, we just don't know the reason why some of these bags end up lost or unclaimed. Um, you know, one, one of the recommendations that we always give, though, is to make sure that you have multiple forms of identification on and inside your bag and try, try to make it something a little bit more sturdy than the paper tag when you get up to check your bag and you go, oh, yeah, I forgot to put my identification on there. Um, and make sure your information is current. You know, we have a story, um, one of the few documented stories of someone who actually came and bought back their own unclaimed baggage. But what's so funny is he had no idea that he was buying back his wife's ski boots at the time. Um, and the story with how she had lost her bag is when they had travel, traveled, um, they had recently been married, but her maiden name was still on the identification and probably a different address. And so it didn't match the ticket information uh, when they were trying to do the tracing. And, of course, this has been, you know, 20 years ago. 
So always make sure, and, and then she got her favorite boots back for $45, unbeknownst to her. I mean, she had gotten a settlement from the airline for her, you know, for her mishandled baggage. But it just goes to show, make sure your information is current, make sure you've got it in multiple locations. This day and age, take pictures of the contents inside your bag, um, because, you know, if you're in a panic and you get to the counter, and they say, well, what kind of bag is it, and what did you have in it? If you say it's a black suitcase with blue jeans and tennis shoes, that's a lot of America. You know, that's kind of hard to identify. So the more information you can have about the exterior of your bag, the interior of your bag, um, and making sure your information is current and make sure your wheels and your zippers and your handles are in good working order, chances that you get your bag back will go up exponentially. Brenda, I need you to help me out. Not long ago, I was flying, and I think I've got some unclaimed baggage out there somewhere. It might be there in your store. Maybe you can help me. It was a, uh, it was a green T-shirt, and it said, I don't have an accent. Y'all do. You think I could find that? Ooh, I don't know. That might be like looking for a needle in a haystack. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to know, what are the most common items you have there in Scottsboro at Unclaimed Baggage Center? People like to travel with a lot of clothes, and they love to travel with their electronics. Mm. Um, you know, and that's the thing, too. People leave things in backseat pockets, overhead compartments. You have a drink, you take a nap, you're distracted with a child. All of these little factors go into when things get left on the plane, which we purchase as well. And more times than not, those items are not going to have a form of identification on them because as the passenger, you know, you chose responsibility to carry it. And... Maybe you had an extra camera bag, but you didn't have any ID on it. You stuck it up in the, you know, up in the overhead. Or you took a nap and put your laptop in the back seat compartment or your e-reader. And then, and then you wake up, you forget, you get off the plane. And, and by the time you've reported the loss um, to Lost and Found, there are some companies out there that the airlines contract with to try to reunite um, those items left on the plane. But many times it's, it's on to another destination and another terminal in another lost and found. Brenda, I know people want to know, and I know you probably have a very politically correct answer here. How much money can you save by coming to unclaimed baggage and finding some of these products? Well, the way I look at it, because I mean, I've lived here my whole life. I've shopped here my whole life. Um, I've worked here for over half my life. Um, there's good deals. There's great deals. And there's fantastic deals. Uh, and I knew you I had mean, an answer. Anywhere from <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, it's because I live it. You know, I'm, I live and breathe um, this company, not just because I work here, but I believe in, in, you know, how we merchandise, how we price, how we work with our communities, how we work with our tourism agencies. We're so much more than just a retail store. Um, and it goes, you know, much further than, than the price. Um, but it's anywhere from 20 to 80% off suggested retail. You know, it, it depends on the condition and the quality and the brand and all those types of things that uh, pre-owned items are taken into consideration for. Now, when we want to come there, and I've gone through Highway 72 a bunch, you're not right on the main drag going through Scottsboro. You kind of get off, I think, on the old 72, if I'm not mistaken. So how do we find you there in Scottsboro? Well, if you're coming from Chattanooga or Huntsville, um, you know, you're, we have access points from 72 from both locations. But ultimately, you want to end up on Highway 35. Uh, which runs just down past our downtown square. And we're in the county seat here in Scottsboro. And we're a half mile down the street from uh, our courthouse. So it's it's pretty easy to find, for sure. Yeah, and I ask any local and they'll tell you. I used to do my grocery shopping in Scottsboro. Y'all used to be the furthest location of Bilo. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. It, it's Bruce's food land now, but yeah. I remember Milo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the only one I ever remembered seeing in Alabama, so I enjoyed shopping there from, from time to time. Not that much, Brenda, so you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> what else can we find when we come to unclaimed baggage there in Jackson County? Y'all have that lovely spot on the Tennessee River, and can people come and actually stay in hotels and hang out there for a long time? They do, you know, and, and right now um, the mood is shifting towards getting out and exploring, you know, day trips um, or car trips rather, those road trips and open spaces and things that the people can do together as families. And, um, you know, I know our local Chamber of Commerce, our Mountain Lakes Chamber of Commerce is working on their road trips. I know 
um, Mountain Lakes Tourism is also working on where you can go on a on a, um, a tank of gas, and we're working on a seven part series that we're starting to build tomorrow um, for for things that you can do to come into our area as well as shop on plane baggage. So tomorrow I'm hiking the walls of Jericho, um, which is about a six and a half mile round trip hike down into just this gorge with these gorgeous waterfall, this gorgeous waterfall down there and these, you know, big rock um, walls. And so I'm excited about that. It's, I think Reader's Digest a few years ago named it one of the 20 best hikes in the country. And it's 20 minutes from here. Um, of course, we have the water. We have um, lots of caves. You know, we, we have Cathedral Caverns, which is a very public access state park uh, just down the road from us. So there's still things that, you, you might be around people, but you don't feel confined. It's not like you're waiting in line for a roller coaster at a major theme park. Um, we've got the places that are open, like our store. We have some really um, stringent social distancing measures in place across our store. Uh, so even though people can, might see a crowded parking lot, uh, when you get inside the store, we have all, all the measures are in place to keep people spaced out um, and we monitor that very closely and keep things sanitized. So, you know, a mix between coming to America's only store that resells lost baggage and being in a corner of the state and a part of the country that just has amazing outdoor space, uh, we think that we're in a prime location and it's a prime time for us to, to celebrate all the things that people are looking for right now um, when they try to get out and explore again. All in Scottsboro, Alabama at Unclaimed Baggage Center. Make your plans right now and go see Brenda Cantrell there at Unclaimed Baggage Center, UBC, and tell her we said hello from everybody at the Y'all Show. When we had you come on, I was told your title was Brand Ambassador, Brenda. And now I know, yeah, you might be a brand ambassador for Unclaimed Baggage Center, but repping that shirt, you're kind of a y'all ambassador too. I am very much a y'all ambassador. <laughs> <laughs> and Bilo couldn't make it in Scottsboro, but Unclaimed Baggage Center sure is making it 50 years strong. And as Brenda said, they're open right now. Go check them out. Go get some great savings there at Unclaimed Baggage, Scottsboro, Alabama. Brenda, thank you very much. And you and everybody there have a great couple of days as everybody gets through this pandemic. And we'll come see you and we'll hopefully come save a lot of money by seeing you. <laughs> that sounds like a great plan. <laughs> All right, Unclaimed Baggage Center, y'all. Well, that will wrap up this portion of our spring swing tour of Scottsboro, North Alabama. But we're not going away. Stay tuned because we're going to scoot west on US 72. And when we come back after the break, Chris Lilly of Big Bob Gibson's is going to be on. He's the pit master and owner of this amazing place in Decatur, home of the white sauce. And we're going to learn about that and the delicious cuisine available at Big Bob Gibson's. That's our second stop here this hour of our tour of the Alabama Mountain Lakes. And all that is headed your way right after this.